So this is the last video on the Procreate 5 sneak peek video series. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at the full CMYK color support, as well as the floating color picker. So that is, of course, until Procreate announces any other features that may be coming up for version 5. Otherwise, of course, we'll cover with more videos. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper. So now let's get to it. All right, guys, now that we're here on Procreate 5 beta, let me first show you how we can set up our new illustrations to be with the CMYK color profile. So once we're here in the canvas section of Procreate 5, we're going to select uh, the plus sign here to create a new canvas. So this is very common, similar to Procreate 4 as well. We have a few of the presets as well as the ability to save custom canvases to be able to access them later on. So here we have the top one is the screen size with a P3 color workspace. And here at the bottom, we have a few of uh, different aspect ratios with the R sRGB color, um, color workspace. But we're actually gonna click on that little plus sign there. And this is the custom canvas's new screen for Procreate 5. It's a little bit better organized compared to 4 where everything was just kind of here in the at the center of the screen. So uh, with the untitled canvas here, nothing's really changed in terms of like setting dim dimensions. So we have here in pixels, we can change that here on the left, but to be able to actually change the color profile that is here on the left side of the screen. So here we can see that on an RGB color profile, we have two options. We have the P3 color profile as well as the sRGB color profile. And in case you're wondering what the P3 color workspace stands for, or if it's better than the sRGB color workspace, in fact, it is a little bit better than the sRGB workspace. So P3 is a step up from sRGB. So this is, um, this is a choice that you may want to have in your illustrations, but basically P3 has better color gamut on the reds and yellows compared to the Adobe RGB, which has a little bit better colors for greens and blues. So both Adobe RGB and P3 are better than sRGB, as you can see here in this quick diagram. But what we're here really to talk about in this video is the CMYK color workspace. So here setting CMYK, we just see the option, uh, one option, which is the generic CMYK profile. We're going to create a new canvas, which is screen size with the uh, CMYK color support. So right here on the screen, I just want to first switch up to the disk mode and I want to show you the differences between CMYK and RGB, which you are now looking at a comparison on the screen. And as you can see, CMYK, the colors are a little bit more muted in terms of vibrancy compared to the sRGB or the P3 display. And that is basically the CMYK here color mode is trying to show us what the colors will look like once they are printed. And the reason for that is because the RGB color workspace refers to the primary colors of light, red, green, and blue. They're used in monitors, television screens, digital cameras, and iPads as well. Whereas the CMYK refers to the primary colors of pigments, such as cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. The combination of RGB colors creates white, while the combination of CMYK colors creates black. So this basically is a quick explanation of the CMYK section. And now for the floating color picker, let's revert back into the P3 color workspace. So now that we're back here in one of my illustrations with the P3 color workspace, I just wanna show you the floating color picker. And it works in any kind of a mode such as disc. We have the classic mode. We have something that is actually upcoming here, which Procreate hasn't uh, fully released, which is the harmony color section. We have the values. And finally, we have the color palettes. And I'll show you guys why I think the color floating picker is actually really useful, at least on my illustrations. As you can see here on the top left, whenever I'm uh, actually starting one of my illustrations, I save all of my color swatches into little circles. And that is so I have quick access whenever I'm using the color picker here and just picking up these colors and being able to use the reference layer and dragging colors and creating new fills. But now that we have the uh, floating color picker here, I don't really have to use or have that section anymore as a layer. So I'm saving a layer and I actually can get quite close as well with my illustration and move the color picker over here. Because as you can see, because I've zoomed in so much, I've lost uh, you know, the chance to actually see the color palette that I had created uh, as a layer here on, the, on top of my illustration. So again, having this option is quite, quite helpful 
and uh, you can actually work really quick by having the floating color picker. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you had some good insights on what's coming up for Procreate 5. If you did find this video helpful, a like would be super appreciated as well as let me know in the comment section if you like the floating color picker or if you would prefer to have any other of the panels as the floating panel, for example, the layers panel or the brushes panel. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts. Please leave a like to this video, subscribe to the channel for more news, tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos and that is all to make you a better digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.